Here I thought I would show you some textbooks I have on abstract algebra. And I don't have very many. I just have these three. And because I only had three, I decided to throw in this book on graph theory. We'll talk about the graph theory book later, because I actually don't really know much about it, because I haven't read it. It's been on my to-do list for a long time, is to read through this book and take notes over it. But it's just a matter of finding time. So these are my three algebra books. We have Abstract Algebra and Introduction. This is the Baby Hungerford book. This is the textbook that I used when I was in the master's program, and I had to take the undergrad version of Modern Algebra first before I could take the graduate level version. And this book is really, really good. If you're interested in an undergraduate textbook in mathematics, uh, in abstract algebra, that is, uh, Baby Hungerford will will treat you well. And we can see what's in the table of contents. I tried remembering what all subjects we covered when I was an under or not an undergrad, but when I was in the master's program. And I know for a fact we did these four, these four chapters. Arithmetic and the integers, congruence and the integers. And then this book starts with rings. So a lot of algebra books tend to start with groups because they're, uh, I guess, simpler, if you want to call it that way. They're de Okay, I'll put it this way. Their definition is less restrictive than rings. But I think rings are more natural for first-time students to to work with, which is why I think Hungerford decided to start with rings because the integers are a ring. We're all familiar with addition and multiplication. And then we have arithmetic and fx, where fx is a polynomial ring. Although I think in this book it also talks about fields and polynomial rings over a field. So we did those. We did chapter 5, I'm pretty sure. We definitely did chapter 6, which is about ideals and quotient rings. And then chapter 7 is where we start talking about uh, groups, which doesn't feel right, but... It's just the way it was. So it comes in at chapter 7. Chapter 8 is about normal subgroups, quotient groups. And I remember when I went through the undergrad course of this, uh, we picked and choose subjects from chapter 7 and 8. We didn't do everything. Like, we skipped the alternating group. In advanced topics, I think we... I think we covered CELO theorems? Maybe not. I'm not sure. Arithmetic and integral domains. I think we did that. I think we did field extensions. We skipped Galois theory. It's a hard it's hard for me to remember. It, it was a while ago. And I do think we did the Chinese remainder theorem. And then these other subjects here I think we skipped because they don't look familiar. Excursions and applications. Public key cryptography. Overall, I really liked this course the first time I took it. It was difficult for me at first, but I was able to, you know, when I started, and then I was able to get a grip on it. And it turned out not to be as bad I was ma as I was making it out to be. So we can look at a theorem. Let P be an integer, P is not equal to 0, plus or minus 1. P is prime if and only if P has the property. When P divides BC, then P has to divide B, or P divides C. And then they give a short little proof. And as always, they have to leave part of the proof as an exercise for the reader. And apparently someone wrote Aaron's theorem and Carly's theorem. Carly's Lemma? Yeah, Carly's Lemma. Off to the side. So this actually did not belong, this book did not belong to me at first. Uh, it was a used book. And normally I don't like buying used stuff, but I think it's probably for the best. And you do kind of, it is kind of interesting to see the other person's handwriting and just what they highlight because it's like you're take, getting a little glimpse of into the past of what they were going through, what they were thinking at the time.
<laughs> what is that? Ass parenthesis. <laughs> See what I mean? You're always in for a pleasant little surprise. Abelian under addition. What is this? Definition example of rings. Z, the integers, and R, the reals, are commutative rings. Skip ahead. The remainder theorem. F is a field. Fx is in big Fx. A is an F. The remainder, when Fx is divided by the polynomial x minus A, is Fa. Wait, what? The remainder, when Fx is divided by the polynomial x minus A, is the function evaluated at A. Yeah, I knew that. What am I saying? I knew that. Stupid brain. Always tripping me up with the basic facts. You do too much analysis and this is what happens. This is your brain on analysis. This is your brain on algebra. Still think drugs are cool? Let I be an ideal of a ring R. Two cosets of I are either disjoint or identical. Okay. That's not hard to show. Yeah, so this is really much an undergraduate text. But, you know, the first time you see it, it's it can be difficult. But I highly recommend this book. If you're interested in self-study and math at the higher undergrad level, you can't really go wrong with Baby Hungerford. So Hungerford is the author. Very strong recommendation for that book. And then we have Big Boy Hungerford. So this is the graduate level version. And don't expect uh, any favors in this book. <laughs> I actually haven't read this book. I just saw it sitting on a table one day where, and they had a sign on it that said free books. And I was like, you know what? I could use another abstract algebra book because I don't have very many. And I thought maybe this one looked promising because Hungerford, because I read this book first. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this book, see if, see if I like it. And you can see already they start with uh, prerequisites and preliminaries, all the basic stuff that you should know. And then we start with groups and the structure of groups. That to me makes sense that they would start with groups. And then what else? We have rings, modules, fields, and Galois theory. Okay, so this is kind of where, well, I mean, okay, so chapter three is about rings. That's fine. And then they talk about modules, which I hate. I don't like modules. It's just I don't get the point. And then chapter five is about fields and Galois theory. Now, I thought I remember reading this book once, and the structure of it was a bit different, that they started with groups and then skipped rings to fields. But maybe I'm confused, because here you can see they definitely talk about rings. Galois group of a polynomial. So this is where they talk about Galois theory. Galois theory can be uh, a bit much for for students. I was okay with it, but I don't know. It's it's definitely not simple. Linear algebra. They have on a, they have the entire course linear algebra in one chapter. And that chapter is what 330 to 366. So it's a little bit more than 30 pages, 30 40 pages somewhere in there. Commutative rings and modules. Hilbert Nosten Nostellensatz. I don't really know what that is. Structure of rings, categories. I've heard this theory of category theory before. Don't know what it is. Anyway, so then they go through the, the fundamentals. So we can look at some group theory. Uh, let's go for a theorem. How about that? We go for a big theorem. Normal subgroups. Uh, no, 
something nice. How about this guy? If F is a homomorph um, homomorphism, <laughs> I almost wanted to say homeomorphism. Too much analysis. It is a homomorphism from G to H and their groups. Then the kernel of F is a normal subgroup of G. Conversely, if N is a normal subgroup of G, then the map pi from G to the quotient group, G factor N, given by the projection map. So it's the, yeah, so you just get the, the, uh, the coset AN is an epimorphism with kernel N. And it's a pretty short proof. So let me see if I remember my algebra. F is a homomorphism. That means F of G times, or excuse me, F of A times B is equal to F of A times F of B. And it has to be, I don't think it has to be surjective, does it? No, it doesn't. I'm thinking of isomorphism. So F is a homomorphism. The kernel of F is a normal subgroup of G. So it's all of the elements of G that map to the identity element in H, I believe is what that is. And the collection of all those elements form a subgroup of G, and moreover, they form a normal subgroup of G. So a normal subgroup is Oh, left cosets equal right cosets, something like that. The alternating group AN is simple if and only if N is not equal to 4. Wait a minute, not equal to 4. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. So if n is n, literally any other number, positive integer, then the alternating group is simple. But if it's 4, it's not. What does a4 look like? I know it's the alternating group, so it's half of s4. It's the I think it's the even permutations in s4. So s4 has, what, 4 factorial, so if you divide by 2... That's 4 times 3, and that's 12. So it's a group of order 12. You know, I there was a time in my history... <laughs> there was a time where I was actually able to do abstract algebra, and I was better at it than analysis. I'm not saying I was good at it. I'm just saying that I was better at it. But the fact that I was bad at analysis, like, much worse than I was in abstract algebra bothered me. A4, wait, hold on. Show that N, this guy, is a normal subgroup of S4 contained in A4, such that S4 factor N is isomorphic to S3, and A4 factor N is isomorphic to Z3. Z3? Integers mod 3? How many elements we got here? One, two, three, four. Hmm. Okay. I should read this book. How about we freaking look up some some Galois theory? And then move on to the next book, because this is getting boring. Chapter 5, Fields and Galois Theory. Fields and Galois Theory. <clears throat> so we all know what an extension field is. You have a field F, and then you extend it by, by some element, and then you get an extension of it. <laughs> That's a very rough definition. So how about we actually read the stupid thing in front of us. F is a field said to be an extension field of K, provided that K is a subfield of F. Yes, that makes sense. F is an extension of E, E is an extension of K. Then the dimension of F over K is equal to the product of the two dimensions. F K is finite if and only if these two guys are finite. Ooh, that's a big one. 
Look how many statements there are. Transcendental elements. F be an extension field of K, an element U of F is said to be algebraic over K, provided that U is a root of some non-zero polynomial in Kx. If U is not a root of any non-zero F in Kx, U is said to be transcendental. F is called an algebraic extension of K if every element of F is algebraic over K. Every element of F is algebraic over K. F is called a transcendental extension if at least one element of F is transcendental over K. So we can look at an example. Q, R, and C are the fields of rational, reals, and complex. I is in complex, but it's algebraic over Q. Hence over R. Yeah, that makes sense, because x squared plus 1, right, has a rooted I. In fact, C is R extended by I. It is a non-trivial fact that pi and E are real numbers, transcendental over Q. <laughs> non non-trivial. That means it's obvious to the to the author. I can't complain about them too much. I think I've said the exact same thing. The monic irreducible polynomial F is called irreducible or minimal. The degree of U over K is the degree of F, which is equal to the dimension of KU over K. So we have a polynomial x cubed minus 3x minus 1. It's irreducible over q. It has, <clears throat> has a real root u. So u has degree 3 over q. 1 u and u squared is a basis of qu over q. So there's some nice examples. I should put this on my to read list as soon as I get the time. But like I said, that was just a book I found lying on a table that said free books. Uh, this was the actual book that we used as in the graduate program. The author is Martin Isaacs. So I bought this book. I really like this book. If you want to – I, I don't have too many algebra books that I say I would dislike. I mean I only have three to, to talk about, but I, the three books I have are really good. So you can see here what kind of material we – progress through. I like the way it goes through here. We have, we start with groups. We talk about subgroups, homomorphisms, actions, silo theorems, permutation groups. Just the flow of this book is really nice. New groups from old, nilpotent groups, solvable groups. We skipped some of this though. We skipped, uh, how much of this did we skip? Oh, God. We did not do character theory. I want to say we did some Artinian rings. We did primitive rings. We did rings. I think we skipped chapter 11. Maybe. I think we skipped transfer and operator groups. I don't rec recognize those subjects. And then we definitely did chapter 16, we definitely did 17, we definitely did 18, 19. Uh, well, finite fields, I think, showed up in 17 as well. I guess this book, now I'm confused, because we definitely talked about finite fields, but I think we stopped with cyclo cyclotomy. Cyclotomy? I'm not sure. But I know we talk about finite fields in chapter 17. But I think they just go into greater detail down here. Here we have norms, traces, and discriminants, so a little bit of linear algebra shows up. The Artin Schreier theorem, ideal theory, no theory in rings. Man, I think we skipped all, everything on this page. It wasn't necessary for the qual. But anyway, here you get an idea of what uh, the book looks like. It's a very dense book. There's a lot of stuff in here. Koshi Forbenius. Man, Koshi's name shows up everywhere.
If P is a finite simple P group, then the order of P is equal to P. Big P. Let H be a proper subgroup of P, where P is a finite P group. Then the normalizer of H with respect to P is bigger than H. Was this a qualifier exam problem that we had? Because it looks familiar. Which means that this is everything we had to write on that test. I mean, I skipped that problem. I didn't do it. I chose something else. All right, what's this theorem say? G is a group of order P to the A times Q, where P and Q are primes, A is positive. Then G is not simple. And you can see the proof is a bit winded. Starts up here, works all the way down. Permutation groups. Permutations always made my head hurt. <laughs> Just couldn't get a grip on it. I think part of it was the notation. When I was taking... Uh, graduate level algebra as a master's student. We used a book by Pierre Antoine Grier. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. He was a French mathematician, French author. And I do not have a copy of that book. I used an online copy. And I barely read the book, too. I didn't need to use... I didn't really need to read the book. The instructor's notes pretty much carried me through. Normally, I would read the book. Okay. We're in uncharted waters now. Uh, Noetherian and Artinian. Module theory. How about we skip ahead to, like, field theory or something? Chapter 13. We need to, ch we need to skip, skip further. Ah, chapter 17, my favorite chapter. F is a subset of R, or I think it's a field, right? So F is a subfield of R, F is a field, R is a domain. If the dimension of R over F is finite, then R is a field. Alpha is transcendental over F if F alpha is isomorphic to Fx. Alpha is al algebraic over F then the dimension of F alpha over F is less than or equal to the degree of F, such that F is a non-zero polynomial with root at alpha. Okay, so that makes sense. Because the function, or not the function, but the polynomial may not be, you know, what is it, monic irreducible? Okay, it's been 23 minutes. Let's close this guy up. So anyway, if I were to recommend a course, a graduate course in algebra, and you were going to study by yourself, I would recommend this book. This book is pretty good. And I guess I would say I would show you the graph theory book, but I'm not going to talk about it much because this is on my to-read list. A friend gave me this book. And I wanted to talk about this book, but... I didn't know where else to put it. I didn't want to make its own video. So we can see the table of contact, contents, degrees, isomorphic graphs, trees, connectivity, traversability. Yeah, graph theory is kind of like its own thing. I think it kind of fits more into the world of algebra than analysis, but it's, it's very different. You could probably also make the argument that it's in the world of geometry. But, you know, you can approach geometry from a number of different angles, right? There's, what, algebraic geometry, differential geometry, Erdos numbers. I hear that name Erdos a lot. Erdos, whatever. Domination. Exploration lights out. 
excursion, and still it grows more colorful. Solutions and hints to odd-numbered exercises? Are you kidding me? You mean to tell me that this book has answers in it? Amazing. I can already tell you that I love this book and I haven't even read it. Okay, I'm not gonna, well, I mean, we can pull, open up to a random page and see what's inside here. Something with some nice pictures. A diagraph modeling the one-way street system. Let G and H be non-trivial connected graphs, then G cross H is Eulerian, if and only if both H and G are Eulerian, where every vertex of G and H is odd. Yep, I'm definitely going to take notes over this book whenever I get the time. Timing is the issue. And I tend to have this bad habit where I tend to pick up a book and read it when I know I should be doing something important like doing my homework. Because I hate homework, I don't want to do it. Connected graphs. That much I do know. I have very minimal graph theory under my belt. I don't. I just don't know the language. Minimal spanning tree problem. Every connected graph contains a spanning tree. Okay, it's been a while, so... Let me know if... You like these books? If you have any recommendations for me to pick up and read, I am all ears. I'm always interested in finding new good books. And I think I found a good geometry book. I need to read through it and see if it's something worth talking about. So thank you for watching the video. And before I leave, if you've made it this far, uh, thank you for the 10,000 subscribers. If you want me, if you want to ask me a question, I'm going to do a Q and A. Uh, there should be a post on my community tab. You can put the question there. And there's a good possibility I will read it and try and answer it in an upcoming video. Thank you.